Being weird. Hello everyone, this is me, Octavian, and this is another devlog for the Realistic Assault Rifle template, which I'm looking at right here, because the computer is here. Anyway, if you don't know what the Realistic Assault Rifle template is, you probably should have watched the past few videos. I'm just joking. You can, it's just an asset. You can check it out in the description below. Um, it's an asset we're working on in Ifmuk Games. It's a game template, first person shooter, third person shooter. We're working on a new update. You can check it out on Pab, also on Gumroad. Um, and in this dev update, I've finally gone ahead and made it work again because for the past few weeks, it's basically not really been working. It's been at a state where things have been kind of broken. In fact, the animation blueprint was at a point where things didn't really work. But anyway, not to ramble, the thing that I really wanted to talk about in this video was something that happened today, really, and something that I came across while refactoring the animation blueprint that I thought was really interesting and wanted to share with you. So we've had a really huge animation blueprint for quite a while throughout the development of the asset. As a matter of fact, our asset has had a huge animation graph, and I'm not talking about this kind of huge. I'm talking about like orders of magnitude this level. It was maybe three or four times the size of the current graph. And so one of the challenges for me in refactoring things for this update and kind of cleaning up the blueprints has been trying to figure out what to do to ensure that we can get a cleaner graph where things are a little bit more explained so that you guys or well if you get the asset or well if you look at it can understand what is going on and also me right because a lot of times i look at it and i don't really understand what's going on if things aren't arranged or if there's too many nodes and up until recently in fact up until a few days ago i didn't really know what to do about the kind of complexity problem in animation blueprints not that i didn't know that there were solutions i didn't know which one was kind of most applicable to each situation and lately i've been looking into each very specific solution to each problem and i've kind of i think narrowed down a few and more specifically i've come across the use of linked animation graphs for kind of taking huge chunks of your animation blueprint that are related and are actually groups of nodes that would make sense to have in a sort of function or a reusable chunk of code, right? But given that you can't have functions inside of a animation blueprint, the closest thing you can have is an animation layer. And we'll talk about animation layers in a different video. What you can do is make a different blueprint, slap all those nodes in there, and link it inside of the main blueprint and have it run. And so that's what I've done with the with the main kind of first person lag. So the thing that, that moves the weapon around. So this thing, the thing that makes the weapon kind of go like this, I've gone ahead and put it all inside of this, which is a linked animation graph, which when you double click, it opens a animation blueprint which in this case is just called apply first person lag and this animation blueprint all it does is it calls this group of four nodes which just modify some bones based on some locations and some rotations which is the entire kind of calculation that we had and i have a bunch of variables here and a lot of stuff happens here but the point is that all of this before i had it in this graph and not only did I have it here, I had it throughout this blueprint multiple times. <laughs> Be well, that was like another issue, right? I had it multiple times because of some kind of dumb way of doing things. But now if I needed to have this multiple times, if I really did, did need to have this in multiple places, what I could do, and in fact, I think I still have a few instances of this, is I could go to them and I could just modify a few of those parameters 
And inside there, like for example, I can modify the movement lag alpha multiplier and just make it 0.5 inside of this specific instance. And that would modify that, which is already a huge both time saver as well as makes it a lot easier to understand what I'm modifying here because it's not just a random group of nodes that I'm looking at that have some property that comes from somewhere. No one knows what this group of modify bone nodes is or what it's doing here. Now you, you know what this is because it just says apply first person lag. You can double click on it. There's going to be an explanation here and you know what it is and it's great. So that's kind of what I've been doing in terms of, uh, in terms of that today. And, and um, I also want to talk, I, I wanted to talk about this because between this modification of having a, having the lag code separated into this other animation blueprint, which I mean, in my and David's case, because we're a team of two for the most part, it doesn't really help us collaborate because he doesn't touch blueprints for the most part. But if, if we were a team of more people, it would help us a lot with, let's say, working on the same blueprint together because now there's two assets that we can work on. So collaborating over a version system or a versioning system like Git would actually be a lot easier because we wouldn't be locked to a single blueprint. And so we could make changes. Now, not only that, but there's a ton of other cool um, kind of things that happen. Like for instance, there's there's a lot of like memory benefits because the disk size of of this goes down, and then these animation blueprints, the disk size is super small because you barely have anything in them. So that also happens, which is super cool. And between, like I was saying, between this change that I made and the fact that I moved all the logic for the uh, lag for the weapons into the blueprint red safe update animation uh, part of the character animation blueprint which has been a change that i made a few days ago we have actually gained three milliseconds <laughs> per frame in 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 the asset which is huge and it's actually been a a massive issue for the longest time i think we were we were at six before, now we are at three milliseconds world tick time, which is great because you guys know that this has been a problem for the longest amount of time and not a problem anymore. And there's still possible optimizations because there's still a third person running here and this could be optimized too. I have not touched the third person animation blueprint yet. This one is still completely not refactored. I have not touched it. And so there's a ton of possibilities to optimize all of that. So yeah, that's kind of pretty much what I wanted to say about today's uh, stuff. Yeah. Uh, I guess the last thing that I wanted to mention and to leave you with is that I don't really talk about this much, but I'm going to leave you with a little, with a little note. Guys, we have a free FPS template check it out in the description it's free it's on gumbra just click on the link in the description this one is paid right you can ignore this one if you don't want it but we have a free one too so you know if you're interested in that you can go ahead and check that out i'm gonna leave a little i might leave a little informational pdf of about like linked animation graphs and some stuff that i found out too i've been thinking of making a few kind of smaller uh, informational things to just to kind of help out hopefully and also to help myself out too because those help me to to leave the information just on there um but you know other than that hope you have a beautiful day morning night afternoon whatever it is and yeah i'll see you. peace